sparked in part by the increased use of video chatting, although I'm not so sure about this. We're going to talk to Dr. Oz and find out what he thinks in a moment. But first, why some people are changing their chins. When 39-year-old Lizette Stevens, a project manager for a software company, looked at her image during webcam video conferences with clients and colleagues, she didn't like what she saw. I was not happy with the profile of my face and the way that it, it, it projected on video and on pictures. So I, I thought I'd do something about it. Stevens decided to get a chin implant, a 45-minute minimally invasive surgery designed to give her a stronger chin. The incision is right under my chin. It actually looks like, you know, most kids when they're a kid, they fall and hit their chin. Today, you can't even see it. Patients can typically expect to be back to work in three days. The cost ranges between $3,500 and $7,500. And the requests for the procedure are on the rise, up to 71% in the last year alone. We'll do chin implant surgery as many as three or four times a day. Dr. Derek Antel is the spokesman for the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. He says the popularity of webcams has made people more aware of their appearance. I think that today with digital cameras, people are seeing their photo in profile more often than ever before. Dr. Antel says the surgery is ideal for people like Lizette, who feel they want to improve their image in the workplace. We made her chin a little bit stronger and it cleaned up her neck. It just makes her look better overall. This is the kind of operation that whispers. It doesn't shout, but it makes people look better. Dr. Mehmet Oz is the host of the Dr. Oz Show. Doc, good to see you. Good morning. Do you buy, do you buy that this is the result of people seeing themselves on webcams? I mean, we've had mirrors for yeah. generations, why would a webcam suddenly make me go out and change my chin? Well, I think it reinforces uh, the reality that you may not be happy with your chin or yourself. But this is another factor, man, it's an, and it's a big one. Uh, we, we always think that people with strong chins have stronger personalities to be more effective in the workplace. And this is one of those plastic surgical trends that's not predominantly in women. It's actually in men as well. And, and that actually is not a misplaced belief. It turns out that less than 10% of CEOs of Fortune 500 companies have weak chins. All right, so there's some perception issue here. If you want a stronger chin, this is surgery after yeah. all. Any other options before you get to this step? You have other options. There's a small little muscle called the platysma. Uh, people can exercise it. It's not that effective, but you've said it got glucus. Uh, not, not very attractive either to do that. You do that in the comfort <laughs> of your own home. Exactly, right. those watching. A good posture helps. Uh, it, and it turns out that, that, ironically, weight loss is probably the most effective technique. But if you want to avoid surgery of all, something called all therapy, it's an ultrasound therapy, being done a lot, it's a half hour office procedure, no cutting. And then we've actually featured it on the show. It's very effective. All right, you showed me something to make you make a funny face again here. But if you want to know just how big a chin or more prominent chin you can get, you can show yourself. So this gets back to who this works for and who it won't work for, and this will predict complications. The most important test, and we can do this at home right now, Matt, you and I will do it, is stick your chin out as far as you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's as far forward as your chin will look if you implant a little... But isn't that more about your jawbone than your chin? We're just mimicking how far the chin oh, okay. could go. This is not actually what you're going to look like. Uh, but if you implant the device that's larger than that, in an attempt to get more augmentation, uh, then you're much more likely to have erosion, which is a destruction of the skin, also increases the chance of infections. And that's the major complication of the operation, that you get an infection, it's about 5 to 7 percent chance. All right, so, so what questions should people be asking themselves before they say, okay, I'm going under the knife just so that I can have a more prominent chin? This is a big issue, not just for chin implants, but for any surgery. First off, are they board certified? In this case, of course, you want a board certified plastic surgeon. Make sure they can actually put this to product into, the, into a person in a hospital. They, they're going to do it in their office, I know that, but if a hospital lets them do it, it means they're really good at it. Secondly, uh, how many do they do? They should be doing dozens of them. Find out who their patients are and actually talk to those patients. You get references from other people. You've got to hire a contractor. Get references from your surgeons as well. And finally, you've got to ask that soul-searching question. Am I happy and I'm doing this because I want to be happier or is this going to make me happy? Because the latter is not a good way yeah, to go. A lot of pl plastic surgeons are really good about talking to patients and saying, by the way, this will give you a more prominent chin. This will not make you happy. This will not make you funnier at parties. No, it's the life of the party, socially more active, things like that. And, and I think that's the big takeaway message. If you, if you want to get this procedure done, make sure in your heart of hearts you're doing it because it's a compelling reason. And I don't want to uh, you know, discount the value of a strong chin in the workplace. The story we just heard of and many others that I've heard of recently augment that reality. People with strong chins are perceived as better. In fact, the heads of major companies who don't have strong chins often started those companies.
companies. No one had to hire them. They, they took the business themselves. And two other procedures on the rise, apparently lip augmentation and cheekbone augmentation. If I give you some numbers, those have increased maybe 50%, 70% increase. And this procedure, Matt, has been around since you and I were.